I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to you all, those of you here in church and those of you who are following our worship from your homes. Wherever you are, 
You're probably warmer than we are in church, but at least we have the uh, the electric heaters on, and we'll be we'll be brisk and we'll be warm in our worship, and it will keep us warm in our souls. So the Lord be with you, and also with you as we join together. Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us remember our imperfections, normal and natural because we're human and so let us give thanks that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And let us confess together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and Grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now... We keep a moment of silence and then we pray our collect as we continue in this season where we remember the unique kingship of Christ, Christ the King. Let us pray. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, one glory. Amen. For our first reading today, we're going to be reading part of the Benedicite. Uh, I hope everybody can see a copy of a white... Do you have one, Margaret? A white piece of paper. I think... Could somebody share and let Mark... Oh, have you got one, Margaret? Yes, great. Everybody has one. So I will say the first bits, uh, and then if you respond, so the first one, bless the Lord, all you works of the, uh, the Lord, and then we all respond, sing his praise. So after the colons, if you all respond, please. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all you hosts. Bless the Lord, you waters above the heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, sun and moon. Bless the Lord, you stars of heaven. Bless the Lord, all rain and dew. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all winds that blow. Bless the Lord, you fire and heat. Bless the Lord, scorching wind and bitter cold. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, dews and falling snows. Bless the Lord, you nights and days. Bless the Lord, light and darkness. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. 
Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Amen. And now I invite you, if you have the wish and the will, to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he says, but before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defence in advance. For I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our Holy Gospel this morning, we have some very realistic words from Christ, our King. Uh, it's a bit like the, the pop song I've mentioned before in, in sermons here in All Saints, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a rose garden. This is exactly what Jesus is saying in his final discourse with the disciples this morning. So it's not going to be easy. Don't think that because you're one of part of my kingdom, everybody's going to look up to you. It'll be absolutely the opposite. The equally he gives encouragement. He says, but don't worry. I'll be with you. The Holy Spirit will strengthen you. So don't worry too much about how you'll respond. The Holy Spirit will guide you. And then finally, in this portion of Luke's Gospel, the words that we reflect on for two, maximum three minutes this morning, by your endurance, you will gain your souls. So yes, Jesus said, I'm not promising you a rose garden. I'm telling you, life will be tough. And every one of us know that. We have all had times, some of us are having times, which are really tough, horribly tough. And yet Jesus tells us, we will not be alone if we are part of his kingdom. If we wish and we will to be part of his kingdom, we will be supported. And he said, not a hair on our heads will perish. Well, that's not a problem for me, but for some of you ladies, it's a bit more of a worry. But for Bob and I, well, we can take it or leave it. Not a hair on our heads will perish if we endure. Now, I deliberately chose the Benedicite this morning. One, because it's a challenge to say it, so it's very good every so often to, to, to use the word. Um, it's something we don't use very much. It's from the Book of Common Prayer. And um, normally in morning and evening prayer in the Book of Common Prayer, uh, we would say or sing the Benedicite. Remember when we used to have morning prayer and evening prayer? Yeah, well, if you do, you remember that we used to usually have the Benedictus. Uh, but as an option to the Benedictus, there is the Benedicite, and it's an alternative prayer of thanks and of thanksgiving. And the reason I like it is two things. One, it reminds me of a time when, by endurance, you'll gain your souls. Yeah, we used to have monthly um, uh, even song, choral even song, in my previous parish, and we used to always sing the Benedictus. So I stood up and at the appropriate time and said, "Now, please stand to sing the 
and I had a little pull on the cassock, and it was a wonderful old gentleman who'd been choir master and organist for 60-something years, and had just retired and was singing in the choir. He said, I think you'll find we're singing Benedicite today. And so, <laughs> quick rewind and said, please stand and we'll sing the Benedicite. I remember that because that gentleman had endured. He'd fought cancer, he'd fought all sorts of horrible things. Every penny he earned from playing the organ, and we were a wedding church, he put into a so-called organ fund. And it had thousands upon thousands in. And he just endured. An example to us all. But the second reason, and the most important reason I'll leave with you, is the Benedicite is full of praise. And it looks beyond the limits. You know, we are part of the kingdom of Christ, I hope, but we're also part of the kingdom, United Kingdom. And so we honour our Queen. But if the President of China, for example, comes, we don't have much to do with him. Or the President, uh, or the Prime Minister of New Zealand, we might say, oh yeah, I've got a cousin in New Zealand or whatever, but we don't have much to do with them. In the Benedicite, the Psalmist confirms that God's kingdom is everything. He talks about the sun and the moon and the stars, the, the scorching winds and the freezing cold. And then, of course, he remembers the people. Everything is part of the kingdom of God. And that is a reassurance, surely, as we end this church year and we begin a new one, to understand that we're not alone, ever. In the kingdom of God, not only are we sustained and part of a family which is universal, we also have the privilege of being guided, warmed and sustained by the Holy Spirit. So yes, by endurance we gain our souls and sometimes it's really hard. But let us take comfort that in the good times, the bad times, even in the boring times, God is with us. And now we move to our prayers of intercession and we will remember, as we do each Wednesday, those whose anniversary of death fall at this time. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It's our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, 
forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. the body and blood of Christ our Lord. In a moment I will bring the Eucharist in one kind to you as you sit. Those of you following at home, I commend to you the prayer of the act of spiritual communion. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be richly rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be your living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love, wherever they are, today and every day. Amen. So, once again, I always say it and I always mean it, thank you for being here today, those of you here and those of you at home. If those of you at home, if you had a small break, I apologise, we had a we may have had a technical hitch, but the uh, worship went on in church, so apologies if that was the case. Uh, we can stay for coffee if we'd like, after the service too has made a lovely pot of coffee. I could smell it as I came in, so I can promise you, if it tastes anything like as good as it smells, it'll be wonderful. So please, if you, if you feel safe and you would have the time, please, in the blue corner, we'll have fellowship with coffee. And we are cautiously and slowly taking baby steps, hoping we can return to normality. I'm sure you've noticed that the, um, the little ribbons have come away from the, um, uh, the pews. We're leaving it to you as individuals to sit wherever you feel safe. And if you feel you do need good distance, then please let Philippa know, and we will always reserve a space in this corner for people who feel the need to have some social distance. Uh, and we're going to, we're thinking about the other things that we can do, coming up for communion, staying for coffee on a Sunday. Slowly, hopefully, God willing, we will be able to do more and more. But for now, let's give thanks. We can come to this church and we can worship God here. Like the only other thing I want to say is to remind you that Christmas is coming. This is the last service in this church of, of open worship before our new church year. Sunday will be the first Sunday of Advent, or Advent Sunday as we traditionally call it, and then we have the Sundays leading up to Christmas, which means of course that um, next week, will we be decorating the church? We will for the Christmas tree festival. A week tomorrow we'll be starting to decorate the church for the Christmas tree festival. Am I right, sir? Yes, yes we do, a week on Thursday. So, if you're still thinking, can I do a tree? Can I get a raffle prize? Can I encourage other people to come? Do it. Do it now, because it's coming up very fast. Uh, our opening day will be a week on Saturday, and it will be all of the following week, culminating in our carol service a week on Sunday. And finally, we have a new bishop. Let us give thanks to God that we have a new bishop of Williston, a very nice young gentleman. No more old is like uh, Bishop Peter and myself. We've got a very young, enthusiastic young gentleman coming to us from the Midlands and uh, I'm sure he's going to bring new life and new spirit and new vigour to Wilston area and he'll be uh, installed in January. So we, we will be praying for our new bishop until his arrival. So, wherever you're going to be these coming days, whatever you're going to be doing, go in peace, love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.